Hello! Um, this is a very reclined video. You can't see this, but I am reclined. The camera is further away than my hands can reach. Thank goodness for autofocus. Um, I thought that I would film just a little chatty video. I've just finished filming a live ep a live episode on my second channel, Sprinkle of Chatter. I do that every week, so you should absolutely go and check it out. But also, um, what I did was filmed my putting my makeup on, because I'm going out for dinner in a minute. Um, and I filmed it all on my phone. I connect it to this little who's a majibsa. You want thing of bobs? I got plenty. I collect, connect it to this. Um, and I just kind of film it by the light of my phone. And once I had finished and I turned this camera on, I was like, wow, wow, you have done better makeup, but I'm okay with it. This will do. It's the end of the year. We're all tired. I am 90% cheese and crackers at this point, um, and Baileys. So at this point, standards, all standards are three sheets of the wind. Um, I wanted to do an old school chit chatty video to just talk about the year and sum it up and kind of with you as a community just say goodbye to 2016 and welcome in 2017 um, and all of the new videos that I'm going to be putting up on this channel sprinkle of glitter and just talk to you really like like we used to way back when when things were just like so chatty I think that's one of the things I'm going to talk about next week is I want to reinstate the the chatty friend element of the channel um, last year I focused a lot on um, making short videos that I thought would be helpful or educational but I think nah screw it let's just have chats it's nice like that um, I think I hope <laughs> right um, let's get to it um, I've written on my notes here a video summarizing 2016 and then I've put in brackets what a year so the truth is, 2016 has been just so beautiful to me. I know that in a wider sense in the world, by many accounts, 2016 has been absolutely atrocious. I'm going to put this down and fiddle with a brush instead. I've always got to fiddle with something. Um, I know that it's been absolutely awful. There's been deaths. There's been humanitarian crisis, crises. There's been Donald bloody Trump. Like, it's been, it's been a year, but on a much smaller, much more personal level, 2016 has been the year that I needed. Um, I started off, let's have a little little sippy here of water, I'm not going to edit this video much I don't think, I started off the year um, in the back of my friend's car, Marie Bits and Clips, so Marie and Ryan, I went to stay with them this time last year over New Year and for New Year's Eve they're like what do you want to do, do you want to go out, do you want to do this and I was like I don't have the energy, if you're new 2015 for me it was a brutal year professionally amazing so many cool things but personally like professionally it was a dream personally it was a nightmare is the best way to put it um very hard and so by the end by this time last year I was like a broken woman so I jetted off to Seattle to stay with my friends Marie and Ryan I took Darcy and they have children and it was really lovely and we just sat in the car, I went for a drive and we went to watch um, the fireworks over the Space Needle and I, <laughs> me and Marie laughed about it on Skype yesterday I basically just sat in the back in like a giant coat just like <laughs> like this while they were like wow it's gorgeous, it's like yeah it's good, happy new year um, and I remember sitting in that car freezing cold, well actually the car was very warm but it was cold outside and romanticising it all and thinking please 2016 be gentle with me because I don't think I can take another year like 2015 and to be honest like 2014 and I can happily report that 2016 was gentle it was lovely I really feel like this year I've completely readdressed the balance of my life I feel really happy that I'm having quality good time with Darcy whereas before I felt like I was always rushing to spend time with her and I was trying to work and do so many different things and this year I've maybe stepped back a tiny bit from work just so that I can get used to the routine of being a single mum so I can get used to doing the school run myself obviously her dad does it half the time but it's not like if something on my days when I have Darcy if someone's gonna look after her it's me and I was getting used to kind of not working daily in a team um, 
I was getting used to just this I've said it before in a couple of videos and every time I say it, it sounds really cringy and I sort of like want to vomit down my own breasts about how disgusting it sounds but basically I really feel like I've found myself I feel like the woman I am today is a woman that I'm comfortable with and confident in and I just feel strong I feel like if the world throws some shit at me I am ready for it I can take it and I will stand up and be fine Whereas last year I was scared and vulnerable and frightened and confused and worried. Um, and obviously there are days when I still like have those moments like anyone. But I do think like, wow, I've achieved a lot. I've done bloody well. I can stand on my own two feet. And it makes me so excited to run at 2017. If 2016 was a year of picking myself up off the ground and standing on my own two feet, 2017 is a year for running on them but we'll touch on that next week um so i've written on my notes work life is so much better um i'm really really enjoying doing the weekly vlogs on my second channel um sprinkle of chatter i just film a little bit each day and then amalgamate it all into one vlog of my week and i feel like that's so much less invasive it wasn't that i felt like you were invading me it felt like i was invading me and feeling like i didn't know what to film or what not to film so i was trying to film everything and it didn't feel great so I love doing it this way and I think definitely for January I'm going to continue doing that um, and then we'll readdress at the end of January and see if you want me to continue doing it or not and maybe try something else but I really enjoy that format. I've been really loving some of the creative projects I'm working on this year or have worked on. I'm currently still working on my novel, it's a women's fiction novel um, about Robin Wilde, this like wonderful woman that I've just completely fallen in love with as I've written her basically I've imagined a whole woman and become best friends with her which when you say it out loud sounds absolutely insane so maybe I won't keep talking about that there's a link I'll put a link below um it's louisepentlandnovel.com that's got a lot more information about the book and um a free newsletter if you want to sign up to that I won't talk about it too much now um what else have we also I also met the Pope hello me and Pope Francis are like best buds now Yes, we are. He gave me a necklace. Is it in this drawer? It's not a necklace. It's really easy. Yes. He gave me gave me some some gifts. Thanks, Popey F. Appreciate it. <laughs> it's probably really offensive to call him that. Sorry. So. <laughs> and I felt like that was such an inspirational trip, and I really want to rewatch that with those set of videos from when I went to Rome, um, and like remember the things he said and try to make sure that I bring them into 2017 as well. Um, and something else I did in 2016, which will continue into 2017, was I started, um, well I went to the UN and became a UN ambassador for gender equality representing Europe, which was really exciting. Um, I really want to do more with that. Um, I've done a little bit this year, but I think that next year a little bit more can be done as well. If you have anything you want to talk about surrounding that, let me know, because I would love to address some of those topics. On here I said um, in my big like chat in autumn that I wanted to start talking about some more adult topics. Oh, I've got a little message. And I definitely have been doing that, um, but I would love, love, love to continue doing that in 2017 because they get such a warm reception and I think that you guys are like smart people and would like to hear about those things so um louise live louise live was a huge project for this year i met so many of you and it was i think louise live was my favorite project work project of the year it was so freaking fun like when i'm on that stage doing it i don't feel like i'm working or I don't know, I don't even feel like I'm doing a show, I just feel like I'm, like, I don't know, like I'm talking, I can't even describe it, like, it's such a buzz, and like, to see actual faces make it so different to seeing a camera, I thought that it would be so much more scary seeing faces than just seeing a camera, but seeing you guys make it, like, makes the whole experience feel real and exciting and buzzy and there's feedback and it feels like much more of a conversation than a lecture which sometimes I feel like I'm giving a speech or something when I'm talking to cameras but I don't know I just love live stuff so any opportunities in 2017 to be on stage I'm gonna be there I just had visions of like standing in a theatre on my own just like this sad washout just being like hey guys um just wanted to tell you a joke and no one laughing 
it's just my insecurities. <laughs> Nothing to worry about there. <laughs> okay, moving swiftly on. Something else I feel has been amazing in 2016 is I've been overcoming two of my fears. The first one um, is my fear of travel. We have talked, if you watch my sprinkle of chatter videos, you will know that I don't travel well. It goes like this. Hi, this is me vlogging. This is holding my imaginary camera here. Hi guys, it's excited. I'm going away. Hi guys, I've arrived at my destination. Oh, I'm scared. I'm alone. I'm going to go outside, but I'm scared and alone. Bye. And that's how they go. Um, but this year I've been really pushing myself and um, I've even been to some places on my own. I went to Malaga, not on a work trip to go and see a friend. I booked it all myself and went myself and arranged it all myself and I was really pleased with that. I went to Cannes um, without my like support network team although Marcus Marcus but but was there it was nice to see him oh that was such a good trip memories um I also I didn't even talk about this on social media I went to Spain to see Liam in August you guys didn't know that I had someone in my life in August um and I did all that by myself and stuff like that so really pleased and the second one I haven't really mentioned this before actually and I feel a bit nervous to do so because I know that it's such a sensitive topic for so many people. I have like a weird, weird is the wrong, I think weird is like not right. I have um, like a thing with food. I don't want to explain it now, but if I don't, it's gonna sound worse than it is. I have a lot of anxiety surrounding eating in restaurants or eating in front of people, which we can definitely talk about later on. Um, and and it's not it's not really the eating in front of people that I have the problem with it's then I fear that it's gonna make me feel ill or I'm gonna be sick or need the toilet one or the other and then I get really nervous about it and then like it's a self-fulfilling prophecy and then I feel like stressed out that people are gonna know that I'm being sick or like having diarrhea basically um, and so it was something I talked about a lot with my counselor I'm not seeing her anymore I saw her at the beginning of last year um, and I really feel like I've made such progress with that and I have been doing, I'm getting so many messages, I've been doing so much more um, in terms of like going to restaurants and eating out and stuff, which we'll talk about this, but it's just a personal like, yes, for me. Um, I've put, I've really enjoyed every month, which is definitely true. I've really enjoyed the seasons this year. I think that I've made the most of those. And also um, something that's really helped me enjoy them is Darcy because we've been just going out and about and I've made some really, really good mum friends. Last year, um, Darcy started at school and reception and I started being coming fr becoming friends with some of the mums there. I'm conscious that I've been talking for ages, sorry. Started becoming friends with a lot of the mums at her school and those friendships have just like blossomed this year and I feel like I've got such a lovely support network and I also have like my local mummy group that I had before who I feel like we've all like solidified our friendships and we're like such a tight knit group now and it just feels like, I could get emotional talking about it, it just feels warm and secure and a thing that I didn't have before, I didn't have any parent friends really and now I do and when you're a parent, having parent friends is so important and it means that Darcy has friends that she sees outside of school and some of them are her school friends actually and we all play together and it means I'm getting out and about more, <laughs> like an old person, I'm getting out and about and just seeing local things and just enjoying time that is just my personal family time and isn't work time and it's been lovely. Um, what else have I put on here? Darcy's come on leaps and bounds this year as well. She's such a beautiful five year old. I know obviously I'm so biased but she's been doing so well at school and she's just such a loving little soul. I just want to squish her for being so loving. Um, the other day we were in town doing some Christmas shopping and she's got pocket money. I think her purse is like somewhere on my desk. She has this little owl purse that she can open up and she's got coins in. She's got, a, she had a five pound note in it and some one pounds because I give her pocket money jobs to do at home. And she wanted to take her money and she wanted to buy me a Christmas present, which in itself, I just think is the sweetest thing that that's what she wanted to spend her money doing. She wanted to do that. So I was gonna let her do that. And then when we got out of the car, there was a homeless man in a doorway and without me pointing him out or saying anything, like I just, I didn't actually even see him because he was behind where I was standing. Darcy said, can I give that homeless man some money? And I was like, yeah, you can do if you want to. 
because it's her money, she can do what she wants with it. And she just walked confidently up to this homeless guy that was like sat in a doorway on a sleeping bag sort of setup and took some money out of her purse and she put it in his hand and she said, this is for you, Merry Christmas. And she just started talking to him and he was talking back and I wasn't standing right next to her, I was standing a little distance, not like a worrying distance away, like I could hear this conversation, but I didn't want to be, I wanted this to be her moment, her experience. It just, it touched my heart that Darcy did that. A, that she was willing to give away her money, but not really so much about the money, that she chose to do that. She wasn't encouraged to, she, she, saw, she saw a need and she went to help that person in need and she didn't discriminate that he was homeless she didn't treat him any less than she would treat anyone else she wasn't afraid of him she had this conversation and what touched me is that she treated that homeless man like a human and I think a lot of people are maybe scared of homeless people or um, see them as like lesser members of society this is a whole topic we can discuss but I was just so touched that Darcy didn't and she just human to human wanted to help and I thought good for her um, and I know there'll be people on here that say don't give money to homeless people, they'll only spend it on drugs or don't do this, you should give to charities, of course, I understand all that but it was like a proud mummy moment and I thought you are a good soul Darcy, I'm proud of you. Um, I'll stop gushing about my child now um, and gush about someone else. My personal highlight, um, which is not to be confused with my like glitter world highlights, which I think was, I think it's Louis Live and meeting all of you and all that sort of stuff. But my personal highlight was meeting Liam, who is my boyfriend. Um, I should probably make a whole video on him, maybe, I don't know. We're gonna do the boyfriend girlfriend tag at some point in 2017. Um, just feel like, it took me a long time to heal my heart and I did also have a boyfriend at the beginning of the year for like two or three months um, and that didn't work, like he dumped me basically um, and I thought that I wouldn't meet somebody I know everyone says that I know this video is so long, I'm really sorry I'm just gonna spend a couple of minutes talking about this and then I'm done, I promise so I really thought that I wouldn't ever meet somebody that would love me and accept me and welcome me and not be intimidated by me because I'm an intimidating woman to a lot of men I have discovered um, I've found that a woman who is confident and unapologetic in her wants and needs is often labelled as high maintenance um, which was something that my an unnamed boyfriend at the beginning of the year said to me when he broke up with me there are a couple of reasons one was that I'm high maintenance and the other was that he didn't want to date somebody with a child um, I, pff, let's not even bother talking about that and when he said that I was high maintenance I instantly agreed and thought yeah I am high maintenance I'm really hard work and I am never going to find someone, I'm going to have to change myself, I'm going to have to like sand down my edges at, or want less or be less and just tone everything down and I had a little bit of time alone and I just thought fuck that, no way, like I am not hard work I know what I want and I'm confident in making my way to get it and I'm specific about my wants and needs, I'm not wishy-washy about things. I am a confident, charismatic, exciting and able woman and I'm ambitious. I've got so many goals that I want to achieve and I'm going to do them and I'm intelligent, I have thoughts and ideas and opinions and I just won't be put into a box, I will, all I will continue to do is celebrate myself and nurture myself and love myself and develop myself and be the very best person I could be in my life for myself and for my daughter and for the people around me and just because that's what I want to do and I met somebody in the summer, Liam, and 
I was in this like, oh, I'm scared to be myself. I need to like just tone it back and just be like, just do what a woman should do and just, you know, sit quietly and just be nice and easy and chill. Well, no, <laughs> I'm not a chill person. I don't want to be. So I wasn't. And he was like totally cool with that and was like, good for you. You, as Tyler would say, you do you. I got cut off in the middle of like this grand speech. So I met Liam and he's not intimidated by the fact that I want to achieve so much in my career. He's not put off or intimidated at all by the fact that I'm already a mother and I've been very clear that as much as I love Liam, whatever happens, whether we work, we work out forever or we are just a short term relationship, he will always be my number two. Oh, I've got a message. Um, he'll always be my number two because Darcy will always be my number one and he's comfortable with that. He's a strong man, so he doesn't feel um, unsettled by that or nervous about that. He's very comfortable with his position in my life and he's very comfortable to support me in my career. He actually has his own career that's quite high up in, so he he focuses on that a lot, which I really like. I don't I don't need someone to like be giving me their attention all the time. I like that he has this other thing that he does. Um, basically, I'll talk about this if you like in the comments. <laughs> I keep saying I'll talk about this. All. Let me know if there's anything specific you would like me to talk about in a video because I'm waffling on now. I'm going to end it here. 2016, you have been a beauty, and I just have to say before I go. <laughs> before I get like emotional as well, such an emotional wreck all the bloody time. You guys have been an immeasurable help and support. Your comments mean the world to me and sometimes I read, obviously you, know, you don't ever know when I'm actually reading the comments, but sometimes in low moments I'll read your comments and feel uplifted. Sometimes in nervous or vulnerable moments I'll read something supportive about someone saying they like what I'm doing and it spurs me on to make more. Sometimes I'll see a comment from another mother talking about how hard motherhood is or just being understanding about the challenges of single motherhood and I feel not alone. I feel like I can do it and this year has really been my I can do it year and I'm so excited for 2017. I think it's going to be our year. So much exciting stuff is happening. Um, I also want to, I mean I don't know if she's watching this because it's a very long video, um, say a special thank you to two people at my management company. Um, to Charlotte and to Maddie for being great. Like these women are like incredible. They 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 arrange my life and they prop me up and push me on and I love them dearly for it. They're very inspirational women. Okay, this is not the Oscars. I don't need to thank everyone. I'd like to thank God and my parents and yada yada. Um, I will leave it here. If you've watched all the way to the end of this crazy long video, leave a comment saying 2017 will be our glitter year. And I will see you next Thursday for another, let's face it, long chatty video. Thanks for watching. Bye.